Mikey here with the full-time dream team. So today I'm gonna show you guys, we had some problems with our forced air furnace in the RV. So I'm gonna show you some ways to troubleshoot, fix, repair it. So first step on the rig is to turn off the propane because we're gonna be working, we're gonna be disconnecting it. But before we do that, I wanna show you what the normal function is. So I'm gonna leave the propane on. So let's head on in to the van. All right, so we've got a forced air furnace in our RV. And so basically the way it works is there's a fan that blows, a flame that lights and gets warm, and then the fan pushes that heat into the van. Well, first of all, this is where the heater's housed under this panel right here. And this is where the vent, it blows out. So this is a Suburban NT, I think it's a 16 SE or 12 SE. We'll find out when we look at the sticker on it. Uh, I'll show you where you can find that on your own. Some of these models will have ducts that go out to, depending on the size of your motorhome. This one just blows right out through this vent. So no ducting. So let's pull off the panels and we'll show you the normal operation and what that looks like. Okay. All right, so we've got the vent cover off and we've got the panel to the bench off and this is what it's gonna look like. We got our gas line here going into the unit. We have the exhaust pumping right out into outside of the van. Then on the front, what you can see, and we'll go over this in more detail, but we have the electrode here, which sends the spark. We have a peephole here, which you can you can monitor what's happening in the system. This is where the gas goes in on this side. And then we've got our wires on the side here, which are power and the thermostat reading. So let's show you what it's supposed to look like. So the first thing you're going to do is turn on the thermostat, which you're going to flick it on. And uh, the unit, the, the unit's going to read that it's cold enough for the furnace to kick on. So then a fan's going to kick on just like that. And if you look through here, it's going to kick on for about 10 seconds. And then gas is going to get put in. So let's pull this puppy out, show you some more of the components, tell you what was going wrong with ours, and how you can fix it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is turn off the propane so that we don't blow anybody up. So on this rig, the propane tank is located underneath the driver's seat, just under this flat. Yours could be located somewhere else, so just turn it off the knob. Let's go in. All right, we've got the propane off now, so we're gonna head back to the unit, disconnect it all, pull it out, and show you what the normal sequence of operation is gonna be. All right, so after you turn off the propane tank, there's gonna be propane in your line still, and if you go ahead and disconnect that without burning it up, you're gonna smell a lot of gas, which isn't a big deal, but Better be safe than sorry. So what I do is just turn on the stove, light it until the flame goes out, which you'll see in just a few minutes. Wait for it. Just like that. Now we know there's no propane in the lines. And so all of that would have just been in my face if I tried to disconnect the hose. Okay. so. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect these wires, which I have together just with wire nuts. So just gonna take them off, disconnect them. Now with these blue ones, there's two sets of blue ones. And so what I, what I did is I put a piece of tape around them just so I know which one's which. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that gas fitting and that will allow us to pull it out. Now I loosened it a little bit before so it should be very tight when you tighten it up so there's no leaks. 
but it was already a little bit loose. So I'm gonna pull out the unit and show you some of the components. This metal box, you can leave it in. Uh, the first time I did, I took it out, but basically there's gonna be a couple screws holding this black metal to the box. And just take those out and then you can slide the whole thing. And it can be pretty tricky. So you just want to wiggle it till it gets free. And voila! This is our forced air furnace, the heater for our RV and our motorhome. So these are the wire connections that we disconnected. The one that has the tape goes to the thermostat. These two blue ones go to the thermostat. This one gives power and the yellow one grounds. Something like that. I'm pretty sure. But don't quote me on the yellow one. <laughs> So we'll come at this side first. All right, so when the thermostat kicks on, it starts spinning the fan. And if you can get a good shot of this little switch in here, there's this little switch in here. You can probably hear it clicking. And uh, that's the sail switch. So fan blows, which triggers the sail switch which is the first line of defense in the, or safety feature in the furnace. So first thing is if you're not getting any flame or getting past the fan blowing, if your furnace isn't getting past that point, then you know to look at that sail switch first. Now the most common problem is that your batteries just aren't giving enough voltage to the fan and blowing it hard enough to trip that switch. So usually that's where you want to go first. If your fan's blowing and it's tripping the switch, the next thing that's supposed to happen is propane is supposed to fit, to get fill into the, the uh, chamber. Once that valve opens and puts propane into the chamber, it's going to spark. So if you're not getting a spark, your next thing is to check as well as there even propane getting put in. Is there valve opening? Uh, so once the propane fills in just a few seconds or you know kind of instantly this starts to spark from this electrode so if the sail switch is being tripped and uh, you're not getting a spark the things you want to look for are the electrode might be bad the board might be bad not sending the signal to to fire or the propane valve isn't opening so one of those things you know where to focus your your attention all right, so in our case with the furnace, we were getting all the way to flame. So basically all the other operations were working. Uh, the fan was blowing, which was tripping the sail switch, which was then letting propane in through here, which was then being ignited by the electrode here. And there was a flame through the peephole. So, very frustrating, after seven seconds of just triggering the electrode, it would just shut off everything. And it would try that three times and then it would just lock out. It would just, the fan would blow for an hour and nothing would happen. So, I knew there was nothing wrong with the fan. I knew it was getting enough voltage to trigger the sail switch. I knew propane was being let in through the valve. And I knew a spark was lighting the flame. So the only thing left was that the unit, the furnace was not sensing that that flame was present. And so the electrode doubles as a flame sense and sends that information back to the motherboard, the module here. So I, I took the electrode out, cl cleaned it. It wasn't dirty. I mean, I could have, I could have just left it in. It was fine. Uh, and the flame was hitting the electrode. Uh, or the flame sensor and so I knew that the only problem left and this was your last resort because most of the time there's nothing wrong with them but last resort was to change out the module so ordered a new module super easy to put in so 
So this this wire is what sends the spark to the electrode. So you just pop it off. And then these wires are these right here. So giving it power and giving signal from the thermostat. So you would unscrew it here with this screw, pop off those wires, and then put the new one in. And then reconnect those wires in this electrode. And then once I, uh, once I did that, the flame stayed lit. So this is where you're gonna find the model number, NT16SE is what ours is. It's a Suburban. Hope this was helpful for you. The first thing you wanna do when trying to fix your furnace, your RV furnace, is to figure out what the model is. So ours was the NT16SE from Suburban. Do the same thing for yours and then look for the manual. The manual is always the first place you want to go. So that's what I did. I went to the manual, looked at the normal sequence of operation, which basically just means what's supposed to happen in what order. And you can see where yours is failing. So I do, I read through the normal operation till I read that what was happening with mine. So a flame was, ha a flame was coming on and it was shutting off. Flame was coming on, shutting off and locking out. And I knew that's where I need to focus the rest of my research on. So you came to the right place. If the answer isn't here, then go to the manual and you'll know where to start researching. If the flame's not coming on, you'll know to look there. If the electrode's not sparking, you'll know to look there. So hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If there's anything else you want to know about what we did to troubleshoot, comment and I'll, I'd love to answer it.